Welcome back to VeeamON 2022, where in the home stretch, actually, Dave Nicholson and Dave Vellante here. Daniel Freed is the general manager and senior vice president for EMEA and Worldwide Channel. Daniel, welcome to theCUBE. You got a big job. I, I, no, I just I don't have a big job. I have a job that I love. Yeah, yeah, job you love. <laughs> but seriously, Veeam, all channel, right? I mean, it's, it has been, so. Yeah, I mean, it's something which, just, just a few seconds on, the, on that piece here, uh, the channel piece. It's something that I love because the ecosystem of partners, an ecosystem of partners, is something which is spending its time moving and developing and changing. You've got a lot of partners changing their roles, their missions, the, the type of services, type of product that they offer. They all adapt to uh, you know, what the market needs. And all the markets around the world are very different because of all these different cultures, languages, and everything. So it's very interesting. In the middle of all that, you know, these tens of thousands of partners, and you try to breed and try to understand how you can organize, how, how you can make them happy. So this is fantastic. So you're native of the continent in, in, in Europe, obviously. We heard Anton today who couldn't be here or chose not to be here because he's supporting uh, family and friends in, in Ukraine. What's the climate like now? Can you share with us what's, what's it like in, in, in Europe? Um, um, just the overall climate and obviously the business climate. Uh, so the overall climate, the way I see it or I feel it, uh, and obviously uh, there, may, there may be some different opinions uh, that, that I will always um, appreciate uh, as also very good uh, opinions. Uh, my view is that it seems in Europe that there are um, a distinction between uh, what people do for businesses, their thinking for the business, which may be impacted by the situations that we know uh, in, in Europe between, you know, because of obviously the issues between Ukraine, because of Russia, let's put it this way. Uh, and, but, and then there is the personal view, which is, okay, you know, that, that happens from time to time, but life continues and, and you know, we just continue uh, pushing things and enjoying life and, and getting the families together and, and, and so on and so forth. So this is in most of the countries in Europe. Obviously, there are a number of countries which are a little bit more sensitive, a little bit more impacted, or the ones who are next to, um, to, uh, to Russia or Belarus and so on and so forth, uh, from, from an emotional standpoint, which is totally understandable. But overall, I'm pretty, pretty impressed by, by how the economy, how people, how the businesses are, you know, continue to thrive uh, in, in Europe. Has Brexit had any it, what, what, what impact, if any, has, has it had? So for us, Vim, uh, the impact is, so first there is an impact, which is on the currencies. Yeah. So uh, all the European uh, currencies are, you know, have, have, have slowed down and, and you, the US dollar is becoming much stronger. Despite its debt. <laughs> yeah, right. Shouldn't be, but so, uh, yeah. but that doesn't impact yeah. on the business. Obviously. Yeah, right, of course. Um, so everything which is economical, macroeconomical is, is impacted. Um, we have the inflation also, which has an impact, which also has, has, has increased because of the oil, because of the gas, of everything that has been stacked, it's a bit stacked. But, but people get used to it. Um, uh, as, as Veeam, from a business standpoint, uh, one of, of the big things is we start sales, uh, selling into Russia and into Belarus, and we're giving our technology, our products, our solutions for free uh, to Ukraine. And that was a, a you know, piece of the business that we were doing you know, within EMEA, which was non-neglectable. So it's, it's, I would say, a business hole now that we need to try to fill with accelerating the businesses or in, in the other countries of Europe. I mean, okay, so thank you for that. I mean, we, you really didn't see it in last quarter's numbers that you guys shared with, yeah. with the world, right? I mean, IBM, similarly, IBM said, oh, you know, it's, it's noticeable, but it's not really a big impact on our business, but given the cultural ties that you had to Russia and the affinity, I mean, you knew how to do business in Russia. It's, it's quite remarkable that you're able to sort of power through that. How about privacy in, 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 around data in, in Europe particularly versus the, the US? It seems like Europe is setting the trend on things like privacy, certainly on things like acquisitions. We saw the ARM acquisition yeah, fail. Uh, yeah, yeah, so there is a big difference. Effectively, there is a big difference between, I would say, North America and the rest of the world. And I would say that EMEA, and within EMEA, I would say the EU uh, is leading very much on what we call sovereign cloud. 
so data privacy, uh, which in other words, data is to, as much as possible, is to remain within either the EU or better within each of the countries. Uh, which means that there is, again, it's, I would say for, in EMEA, it's good, I would say for the, for, for the business, for the partners, uh, because then they have to develop around the cloud a number of functions uh, to ensure that because of this data privacy, because of this G GDPR or rules and things, uh, all, all the data remains and resides uh, in, in a given geographical environment. Uh, so it's, which is good because it creates a number of opportunities for the partners. Uh, it makes obviously the life of customers and ourselves a little bit more difficult. Mm -hmm. But again, I think it's good. It's good. It's part of all the, mm -hmm. the way we, we structure and we organize. Uh, and I think that is going to expand because data is de becoming so key, a key element, a key asset of companies uh, that we absolutely need to take care of it. Mm -hmm. And it is where Vim plays a big, a big role in that because we help being companies uh, managing their data uh, and secure the data in sort of way. Yep. Yeah, r ransomware has been a big topic of conversation this week. Um, do you sense that the perception of that as a threat is universal? Are there are there differences between North America and the EU and other other parts of the world? Oh, we universal. That, yeah, it is universal. We see that everywhere, and. And I think this is a, a good point, a good question too, is that it's very interesting because we need to get acquainted to the fact that we are going to have run so we are going to be attacked. No way out, you know, there, anybody in the, the morning, you know, uh, is, is, is waking up, is going on emails and click, clicking on an email, too late, was a run somewhere. What can you do against that? You know, all humans make mistakes, you know, you can't. So it will happen. But where, where it's absolutely very important and, and where Veeam plays a big role and where our partners are going to play an even bigger role with, with our um, uh, technology uh, is that they can educate the customers uh, to understand that to have ransomware is not an issue. What, what, what has what happened is not a problem. What, what they have to do is to organize so that if they have ransomware, their data is safe. And this is where I play a big place. You know, we, I'm, I'm, the, uh, a couple of hours back, I was, I was doing a kind of parallel with something else. It's totally crazy, but that's okay. I'm going to say it. It's about the COVID. What, no, what, what do we do? Do we, have, do, do we have something against COVID? No. People are going to get COVID, certainly many people are still doing it, but what is important is to be capable of not being too sick. So it is the prevention, so, which, yeah. is, which is important. It's the same thing here. So there is this mindset we have psychologically with the partners, and they have, they have to provide that services to their customers on how to organize their data using the technology of Vim in order to, uh, to be safe if anything happens. So another related question, um, if I may. When Snowden blew the whistle on the NSA and d divulged that the NSA was listening to uh, you know, all the phone calls, there was, seemed to be at the time, as I recall, a backlash sentiment in, in Europe, particularly toward big tech and cloud providers, um, and skepticism toward the cloud. Has the pandemic and the reliance on cloud and the rise of ransomware changed that sentiment? Had the cha sentiment changed be before then? Um, obviously, plenty of cloud going on in, in Europe, but, but can you describe that dynamic? Yeah. No, I, I think that. <laughs> yeah, I think that pe people were too, you know, as usual. It, it absolutely reminds me when I was at VMware, uh, when you know, when we went from the physical boxes uh, to the virtual machines. You know, I remember the the, the 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 IT people in the company said, "No, I want to be capable of touching." So same thing here. When you when you talk about cloud, you talk about something which is virtual, but virtual outside, even outside somewhere. Um, so there is a resistance, a psychological resistance to wh where is my data? How do I control my data? And that is, I think that is very human. Then you need to, you know, it takes time. And again, depending on the cultures, you need to get acquainted to it. Um, uh, so that's what happened be be before the pandemic. But then the pandemic took place and then there was a big problem. There was nobody anymore in the data centers because they couldn't work there. And then people were starting to, to work remotely. 
So, so we, the, the IT needed to be organized to, you know, to compensate uh, for all these different changes. And cloud was one of them where the data could be stored, where the data could reside, where things could happen. Uh, and that's how actually it, it has accelerated, uh, at least in a number of countries where people are a little bit laggards, um, to, 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 to accept the adoption of, 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 of cloud, cloud-based data. So is there a difference in terms of um, the level of domination by a small group of hyperscale clouds versus uh, smaller service providers? Uh, you know, in theory, you have EU behaving in, in, in a unified way in sort of the same way that the United States behaves in sort of a federated way. Um, do you have that same level of domination or is there more is there more market share available for smaller players in cloud? Any, well, any regional differences? Yeah, there, there are big differences. Uh, there are big differences, again, because of the sovereignty, mm -hmm. uh, which is absolutely uh, pushed very, very, very much in, in Europe. Um, I, I'm, 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 I'm telling you, I'm, going, I'm, I'm giving you an example um, that it was in, I think, in October last year, some, somewhere. The French, the French administration said, um, we don't want any more any administration investing in Microsoft 365 because the data is in Azure, the data is out in the cloud. That's what they said. So now, now these last days, this last week, that has changed because Microsoft you know, introduced a number of technologies, data centers in France and so on and so forth. So things are going to get better. But the sovereignty, the fact that the data, the privacy of data, everything has to remain in the countries uh, is doing something like the technology of the hyperscalers is used locally, mm -hmm. wrapped by local companies like system integrators, global system integrators, oh. to ensure that the sovereignty uh, is set and that the privacy of the data is for real and according to, G to GDPR. So again, it's a value add. Uh, it makes things more complex. It doesn't mean that uh, the, Google, uh, the Google Cloud, the Azure, or the AWS uh, are not going to exist in Europe, but there are going to be a number of layers between them and the customers in order to make sure that everything is totally wrapped up and, and that it complies with the EU regulations. Help us understand the numbers, Daniel. So the, the number of customers is mind-boggling. It's, it's over 400,000 now, is that right? Yeah. Right, yes. Comparable to VMware, which is, again, pretty astounding. And the partner ecosystem, can you help us understand the, the, the scope of that? Part one, part two is, how do you service and provide um, a, 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 that partnership love to all those companies? The partners. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we have about 35,000 around the world, 35,000 active partners. But again, it's 10 times less than Microsoft, by the way. So, so and, and this is very interesting. Yeah. I, I often have the questions of how do we manage So first of all, uh, we do cheering like anybody sure. does. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, we have an organization for that, and we have a two-tier uh, sales mo motion. That means that we use the distributors to take care of the mass, the volume of the smaller, smaller uh, partners. Uh, we help the distributors, we help, so it's, it's a leverage system. Uh, and we take care, obviously, more directly of, of the large partners, or the more complex partners, uh, or the ones of interest. Uh, but we don't want to forget any of those, because even the small one is very important to us, because he has his customers, maybe in the middle of nowhere, but he's got a few of them. Mm -hmm. And again, to have a few of these customers, when you add up, you know, it makes, at the end, it makes a big business. You know, one plus one plus one million times makes, you know, makes, makes yeah, yeah, yeah. huge things. Uh, and plus, we are in the recurring business now, now that we've, we've introduced three, four years ago, uh, our subscription licenses, which means that it's only incremental. So it's just like the, you know, the telephony, you know, the telephony uh, uh, business, uh, where the, the number, you know, the, the, the cell phone, plans, you know, you, it's always grabbing as, as many as possible uh, uh, consumers in this case. So it's always the same thing, or I have the same, same kind of uh, 
uh, I do a parallel with the French, the French uh, bakery, the French boulangerie, where I say they do their business with, with the baguette. And then from time to time, you know, they sell a patisserie or they sell a cake or cookie or something. But the sum of small things makes the big things. So it is important to have all these small partners uh, everywhere that, that have their small customers or big customers and that can serve them. So that's, that's the way. So we, we segment by geography. And what we do now is, uh, it is something which is new, we segment by competencies. So it's what I call the soft segmentation. Because if not, we will have a lot of, of these partners competing to each other ju just to sell Veeam. Uh, Veeam being number one uh, in many countries, that, that, that is what is taking place. And we want them to be happy, we, want, we don't want them to fight against each other. Um, so what we do is we do soft segmentation. And soft segmentation is um, this, this partner is competent in this field with that kind of use case, doing this or this or this or this. It's just like you when you go to the restaurant and you want the restaurant next to your place, so you click for the geography and then you want to, uh, to go for Indian food, so you click restaurant Indian food and then you want something. So we want to give the possibility to the customers to say, yeah, I think I know what I want. And then you can just click and get the partners or the list of partners which are the most suited for, for his needs. So it's what I call the soft segmentation. The other thing which is important is the network. Mm. It's very interesting because when we look at a lot of companies, it's not a network. You know, you've got VARs, you've got cloud and service providers, you've got SIs, you've got all the things. But if you take each of those individually, they don't have the competencies to answer all the requests of the customer. So the networking is partnering with partner. That means to have the, the connection so that the a partner A, who has well, his customer, but this customer has a request that this partner cannot fulfill because it's not his competency. That he's going to find the partner or the other partners that can fill this competency and, and work together and then it's between them to have the, the model that they want so that together they can, they can please the customer with their requests. Do you ever want to have Veeam on? I mean, I'm happy it's in the US. and I, I like going to Europe. But you ever, you ever want to have Veeam on in, in Europe? <laughs> yeah, we have, we have, we have, we have Veeam on. We have many Veeam moments in Europe. You have the mini ones, v v okay. All Veeam on tools. Globally. So where do you have uh, Europe in, a, in APJ, yeah, it's what we do. Yes. Where do you do it in APJ? You, you, in, in Japan, obviously. In, in no, I, don't, I don't know all the locations. You know, we okay. do, uh, no, okay. Tens and tens of them. A lot of them, okay. The small ones, what we do, uh, re replicate what, what, what is done here on one day, and then it goes. And you'll do that in, in UK, yeah, France, yeah, yeah, Germany, yeah, yeah, yeah. local? And also small countries in, in Saudi, in South Africa, in, uh, in Israel, in Bulgaria, in you know, all these countries. Because, you know, we can be virtual, that's nice. Oh yeah. But I love to be uh, you know, having a breakfast or a lunch or drink next to a partner or a customer because you learn so much more. Yeah. The informal information is so important to understand how the business and how the market develops and what the needs are of customers and so on and so forth. How, how was the European attendance this year? It must have been down. It's hard to get into the US. It's, it's actually easier to go back to, to Europe. Uh, virtually, I, I don't know the numbers, but I think... Well, no, virtual, I'm sure, it was huge. Yeah. But physical. Was uh, physical here, we've, we've got about uh, 300, uh, 300 uh, Europeans. Yeah. Okay. Which Out of... Do we know what... What are, what are the numbers here? Do we know? Have we I'm heard numbers? Sure. I know 45. It was supposed to be around 45K combined. That's, so, that's uh, a hybrid, yeah, right? So, yeah, so I... I, I it's it's hard to get into yeah. the U.S. It, we're still figuring that out, so it's, I'm yeah. not surprised. But now, do you... But it's complementary, yeah. Do, yeah. Do, you, do you go to them all? No. <laughs> you can't, right? No, that's not physical. <laughs> I cannot. I mean, actually, I would love... But some, to, yes. I, I would love to be uh, capable of duplicate myself, but... Uh, you go to the one... Well, in, I'm a unique. You go to the one in <laughs> France, obviously, yeah? Uh, yeah, usually in France, well... Depends you know, if you're home. Yeah, you know... Th that is interesting. Is uh, the way we organize, the way we organize in Europe is I really want the, the local leaders to be the ones managing their countries. Yep. I, I, I'm I'm there to support. I, I'm not there to be you know yeah the big boss is coming is showing no. It is not it is not that. Uh, I'm again if if they request me to come if they want me to pass a message to certain type of customers and partners I'll do that. But I don't want to run the show. It's not it's not the way I manage that.
Yeah, I get that. You want to respect that. As if you show up in France, and, and that, that's your home country. It's like Ratmare showing up here, like taking over the stage. It would be like, yeah, you know, it's our turn. But it's just like, you know, I'll give you another example. So obviously, we have, uh, it's even uh, the headquarters, the EMEA headquarters is in France, right? But it is the French office. Mm -hmm. And I don't go there. I try not to be there because it is yeah. the place for the French people taking care of the French market. Uh, for the French manager. If I go there, everybody's going to come and ask me questions and ask me to make decisions and things. No, you know, they have to run their business. So where do you spend your, where and how do you spend your time? In, in airports and in planes. What, yeah, what yeah, yeah. Of planes? course. <laughs> <laughs> do you have another question? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, if we, if we have time really quickly, on, just on that subject of sovereignty, you know, we're here in Nevada, just across the border, California. People in California have no problem at all replicating things here for disaster recovery because it's in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Now, is there a um, is there a is there sort of a cultural sense that tearing down those borders from a sovereignty perspective within Europe would fundamentally change the business climate and maybe tilt things in favor of the AWS and GCPs of the world? instead of local regional business. Uh, the joke that I heard recently from someone, I thought it was funny, I don't know if it would offend either Germans or French, but it was that, uh, it was that AWS um, was confused and they, they were planning on putting a data center in Strasbourg because they thought it was in Germany. And it was the this is a bad joke. <laughs> but the point is, it, the, the point is, it's a, a it's it's, it's, it's it, like a, it's a dumb it, American. It's, it's, is it's, it true? It's, it's, no, no, no. Okay. But it was it was a dumb American joke. This was this was told by a French person, basically saying, you know. But, but this person was certainly not not from Alsace. Yes, right. I'll tell you because that would have been a very bad one. Yeah. But 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 the, but but the point is this idea that you have these mega hyper clouds coming in and saying, okay, boom, I'm, we're 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 putting one here and you're going to use us regardless of the country you're in. Um, how does that, you know, is there, a, is there a push within the EU to tear those barriers down, or are those sovereignty walls enjoyed by the majority because of the way that it changes the business climate? Any, any thoughts from that perspective? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's simple. Uh, to me, it's very simple. It's, it is a hybrid thing. That means that these, these big hyperscalers are there, Mm -hmm. They're not going to be used. But what they do is they are going to partition themselves and work with these local people so that their big thing appears as being independent, smaller data centers. That's, that's the only thing. You know, you build a house and, and then you put walls you know, between, right. the different, between, the different, uh, uh, between the different rooms. That's the only thing that happens. So it's not, it's not at all a no at all to uh, Azure, the AWS, or Google Cloud. No, it's not that. It just means that there is a structure and organization that has to be put in place in order that the data resides in given geographical locations using their infrastructures, their technologies. Does it make, does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, it, it, except that it puts them in the position of having to have a physical presence yes. in each place, which is, which is advantageous in one way and maybe less efficient in another. Yeah, but there, there are some big markets. Yeah, yeah, and they eventually got to get there, right? I mean, yeah. They, they started it, you know, one, one place in the world where they really started was in, in ANZ. At least what they did, yeah. you know, what, what, five, six, seven years ago? Mm. You no, know, they put their data centers over there because they wanted to, to gain the Australian market and the New Zealand market. So build it and they will come. Daniel, thanks so much for coming to the You're Cube. Very, very interesting welcome. conversation. Pleasure. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, we're wrapping up day two at VeeamOn 2022. Keep it right there. Dave and I will be back right after this break. <laughs>